everyone, welcome to The Buzz. On this episode, we'll be highlighting one of our largest preserves that has plenty of reasons to visit. Goodnow Grove has miles of trails, a long history of uses, reptiles in the nature center, and a legendary sled hill, plus so much more, it's gonna take us almost a full episode to trek through it. We'll also take time to investigate scat, or is it a hairball, maybe puke? Well, to find out, you'll have to get ready to poke around on this episode of The Buzz. Welcome to Goodnow Grove Nature Preserve, home of Plum Creek Nature Center. Located in Beecher, this preserve has many trails, a campground, a legendary hill, a peaceful pond, and so much more. It also holds a special place in my heart because it's where I started my full-time career as a naturalist. I have spent so many hours exploring every nook and cranny and even more hours trying to share it with whoever would listen. Like many forest preserves, Goodnow Grove has had different uses over the years. Once it was a home to a family who farmed the land. By the 1930s, the Boy Scouts of America acquired the farmland and the surrounding forest to develop a campground called Camp Crete. In the late 1970s, the Forest Preserve District of Will County purchased the land when the camp became too expensive to operate. In 1996, a portion of the preserve was dedicated as a state nature preserve to add extra protection to the diverse mix of habitats, as well as some state threatened or endangered species. The facility on site has been renovated twice, with the latest being in 2012, to add more accessibility to the building and a nature play area. Joining us today to talk about the history, preserve features, and all the activities you can do here is program coordinator, Bob Ryerton. Thank you, Bob, for joining us once again on The Buzz. Thanks Can you tell us how long you've been working here at Plum Creek Nature Center? Yeah, actually, I've been uh, working at Plum Creek Nature Center for a little over 20 years. Can you tell us about the history over the years here at Goodnow Grove? Yeah, so actually, before the Forest Preserve acquired the property, this was a scout camp, and we still have a lot of visitors that come in and will tell us about uh, their days spent, um, at their time here as, as scouts when they visited this site uh, before it was a forest preserve. And actually, one of the uh, trails here is called the Scout Trail because of that, because it's, it's a, an original maintenance road for the old scout camp. There was also a Girl Scout camp nearby, and some of the stories that we've been told is that uh, back in the day, the Boy Scouts would sneak over to the Girl Scout camp to scare them and then run back to the Boy Scout camp. We've also been visited by uh, several of the old caretakers that have lived on site, and there was an, another building here that some of the caretakers lived at, and they've told the stories of them actually waking up in the morning on a snowy day and sledding at the time um, from where the nature center is, kind of down to where our pond is. They could sled all the way down there. Now, currently there's a lot of trees there, so it would be hard to do, but back in the day, apparently, there was a clear shot to the pond. Plum Creek Nature Center itself is was the old building that the scouts used as their kind of equipment center and meeting hall. And when the Forest Preserve bought it, that was the, we kind of just moved directly in to create the nature center. And behind us is what we call the big hill. It's a legendary feature here, so say the kids. And there's a pretty cool story with the hill. How was it built? Um, well, the story that I, that I hear most often is that it was uh, part of a project to help uh, people in the city that were incarcerated, that they were having some problems, right? And so they actually brought them out on trains and trained them how to use heavy equipment on, by, by moving earth around. So they would build the hill up and take it down and build it up and take it down. And that the hill was left up when that program ended. And that's how we ended up with the hill. And you may notice in the background, there's some additions being added to the hill. And normally during the summer, we have kids rolling down it, running down it, but in the winter, it transforms into a giant sled hill. And there's a lot of things you can do here for winter recreation. You wanna tell us about everything you can do? Yeah, absolutely. The sled hill is famous in our area. Matter of fact, most people that know about this site know about it because of the sled hill. That's, that's how they know us. That's, that's the place I went sledding. 
with sledding, we do rent tubes inside the nature center so you can rent a tube, go up on the hill and take a tube down or you can bring your own plastic sleds or inflatable tubes on the hill to sled down the hill. Besides sledding, um, you, can, you, you can hike or cross country ski on the trails and we, can also, we also rent snowshoes here and you can use our snowshoes on the trail if you want to bring out that, those as well. Um, and then finally, we have a little pond that when it is cold enough and the ice is thick enough, we can allow skating on. So you have to call the Nature Center and check on that one. Yeah, definitely call us because, of course, one of our jobs is to go check the hill, which is one of my favorite things to do here, that we make sure it's sledable and ready to go. Sled Hill is open! Woo! Many preserves have hiking trails, but what's unique about this place is that we have so many of them, right? How many do we have? We have five trails here at Goodnow Grove. And they're different textures is how I remember them because there may be not signs telling you what you're on, but you can tell this one's natural surface. There's a, the greenway is a limestone surface. Right, each of our trails, it just kind of worked out that it's a unique trail surface. So right, the Greenway is crushed limestone. Scout Trail is more of like a gravel road with thicker gravel. Um, this trail, Oak Ridge Trail, is a natural surface. So yeah, each one has a little bit different surface, um, which kind of makes it interesting and able to, you're able to see where you are all the time. Yeah, and kind of remember which one. Yeah. Now, do you have a favorite one? Yeah, my, my favorite is actually the Oak Ridge Trail. Mine too, which oh, we're wow. on. Yeah, yeah. Which we're on right now, yeah. Why is it your favorite? Um, it's kind of cool because it goes up on a little bit of a ridge mm -hmm. that, and so you get a little bit of a, a view. Um, it's still wooded, which means that there's a lot of different animals that you can possibly see here because they can hide it you know, in amongst the trees. Um, and then, but you get a view of actual Plum Creek. Yeah, you I like that you're see. up high, you look down, yeah. you can look up at me in the tree canopy and see the birds. Right. I always see deer out here as well. Yeah. And then in the spring, there's just wildflowers like everywhere yeah. along yeah, the ridges. Yeah, this is a really good part of the preserve to see wildflowers as well, yeah. I also always led my tree hikes out here because there's so many different tree species, so it looks beautiful in the fall. Absolutely. From the trail here, you can see oxbows in the river, in the creek bed too. So it's like really, really cool to get the good, the good idea of the layout of the creek as it's going through the preserve. Mm -hmm. When I first started here, there was a pretty cool story of what was happening in the creek here. There was salmon. Do you remember the details of that? Yeah, so we did a little bit of research on that as well. Um, because they stuck salmon in the Great Lakes, Plum Creek actually will run up, eventually runs into uh, Lake Michigan. There's another creek in between, but it gets to Lake Michigan. When we get heavy rains in the fall, um, the creeks swell up and they push out into the lake. Well, the salmon are kind of uh, stocked up there and when they feel that rush of water coming up, they actually try to come up the creek. And occasionally here we get giant salmon in this creek, in this preserve. It's really kind of crazy to see. Think that's right, thing. right from this trail, it's really cool to see. So this creek empties into, into Heart Ditch, which empties into the Little Calumet. And the Little Calumet is uh, it always was a very flat river because it is right along the lake shore. It kind of runs, it follows the lake shore. Uh, and then the Army Corps kind of messed with it a little bit too uh, over the years to try to get water flowing which way or that way. So right now it's so flat that if the lake level is high, the water runs out and runs out toward the Illinois and eventually to the Mississippi, to the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. If the lake level is low, the water will go kind of its original path, which was back into Lake Michigan. If visitors want to hike longer distances, there is an iconic feature they can go out to, which we featured in the buzz a few episodes ago, the Big Bridge. Do you have any good stories about hiking out to the Big Bridge? Um, yeah, there's a, it, it, the Big Bridge, uh, to get to it, it's, it, there's, the only way to get to it is to, to take a longer hike, right? Mm -hmm. You can't get to it with a short hike. There's not a parking spot where you can go right to it. Um, so we've got a lot of stories of people like, wanting rides back or getting lost, yeah, actually getting, getting, lost. getting like, <laughs> how do I get back? Because they don't want to turn around. Unfortunately for that trail, it's a, it's, you have to go out and back and a lot of people don't want to turn around. And so they're like, where, how far away am I? And it's not as far as you think, but it is a little bit of a hike.
and it's a beautiful spot. I mean, once you see it, we'll take your breath away. I've heard and seen pileated woodpeckers there, so it is right. worth the trip. It's absolutely worth the trip. It's a great spot to sit. Right now, they've, they've added a table, a picnic table right out there, so you can sit down and just kind of chill out by the bridge mm -hmm. and just enjoy that unique spot in the preserve. Yeah, because you're kind of far away from everything. Yep, you are. You're a little bit removed from everything at that spot, mm -hmm. at that point. It's also a great one to go snowshoeing on. If you want your workout, that's usually my go-to snowshoe trail. Yeah, that is a good one. It's about three miles round trip. Mm -hmm. If you're not sure where to start when it comes to the trails, or you have little ones that are really anxious to see some wildlife, we recommend Snapper Pond Trail. Bob, what kind of things can you see out here? Yeah, Snapper Pond is real close to the Nature Center, and you can see uh, turtles, snakes, and frogs just about any time during the spring or summer. because you have this overlook, there's benches, you can take some time, look over, see if you can find anything, and the whole trail is paved, so it's perfectly accessible. If you're a birder, this is a great spot to check out as well. I have seen the state endangered black crown night heron out here, as well as lots of other birds. Right, yeah. Great blue heron likes to use this pond a lot to hunt for fish and frogs. Uh, great egrets. Uh, we've seen um, double crested cormorants here recently, and you can see them really close up. Lots of different ducks will stop here um, on and off too throughout migration, so it's a really good spot. And in the spring, I always remember baby Cooper's hawks tend to be near here and fly around and scream and carry on. Right, and we've seen a lot of owls in this area as well. The barred owls seem to like this spot quite a bit. And if you're lucky, like the name suggests, there are snapping turtles out here. I've seen things I thought was like a giant log or a rock and then it started to submerge and move. Like they're pretty massive out here. Yeah, we have some very large snapping turtles. It's easy to see where this pond gets its name from. Uh, and they can be seen just kind of randomly throughout the, the, the day, anytime. Mm -hmm. I've been out here with school groups or, or just kind of out here checking on things and the turtles just pop up out of nowhere. And they are very large turtles. We're gonna take a short break, but when we come back, we're gonna look at the campgrounds and see what's inside the Nature Center. Do you want to do more to protect nature, inspire discovery, and connect people with the great outdoors? You can when you support the Nature Foundation of Will County. This nonprofit charity raises funds through support from donors, organizations, and the business community to help support the Forest Preserve District of Will County's mission. The foundation helps various initiatives take flight. It helps the Forest Preserve secure national touring exhibitions. It pays for new amenities such as campground welcome stations and bike repair stations on Will County's regional trails. It assists with the costs associated with land stewardship, which includes equipment for volunteer workdays, and seeding of native plants to restore the land to its original state, which helps enhance not only your outdoor experiences, but local wildlife as well. There's a lot more work to be done, and we're just getting started. Roll with us on this adventure and become a champion for nature so future generations can appreciate and explore everything Mother Nature has to offer. Donate today at willcountynature.org. Historically, this was known as Camp Crete, and throughout the years, the campgrounds have relocated, but it's still a really prominent feature today. This place is very popular with scouts will rent out the whole campgrounds to have their camperies, bonfires, and weekend adventures. But it's not just for the scouts, it's for the public too. You can rent a space and explore the preserve at night, hearing the owls, or maybe trekking up the hill to see the stars above. Bob, tell us more about this campground. How many sites are there? 
There's actually nine sites here on this campground and they range in a variety of, of locations. We have two accessible sites and then some sites are more a little bit more wooded or enclosed and some sites are more out in the open so people can kind of choose what they prefer best for, for camping. Are there any other features that make this a good campsite to spend the weekend at? Well, besides the fact that there's about six miles of trails here, so there's plenty of trails to hike and explore the preserve. Um, you get to, like you mentioned, you can come out at night with, and see the stars or listen for owls, right? Um, Moni Reservoir is right down the road. It's our sister preserve, and it's a real short way where you can canoe and kayak and fish. Whether you're hiking, camping, sledding, maybe even renting a shelter for your family picnic, please come and visit Plum Creek Nature Center. There's tons of things to do, like programming and getting information, but also interactive exhibits that change seasonally and live animals. Can you give us an overview of everything you can do here? So besides there's interactive exhibits, we have crafts that change monthly. The exhibits change um, quarterly throughout the seasons. and. Um, you can get to talk to naturalists here. So if you have a question about nature, if you want to know what's being seen on the trail, this is the place to come. And you can't visit the Nature Center without saying hello to our resident reptiles. Bob, can you give us a little show and tell about all of our friends here? Yeah, well, you're holding Penny right now. Penny is a ball python, and I have Bluey right here, and Bluey is a blue tongue skink. Now, neither of these animals are from here. Um, they are uh, exotic animals, but they've been adopted. So these are animals that people try to keep as pets that um, it's really a little bit more involved than people think and they, they couldn't do it. So we're providing them the home. Also, because these guys are very, very calm, we can use them with visitors and let people see them up close and the animals don't get stressed out and the people don't get stressed out. And we also have a box turtle, um, Lilo the box turtle as well, um, that people can come and see in the nature center. This is a good time to address your fears because these animals are used to working with all types of people. So if you ever want to touch a snake, it's the perfect opportunity to do so. So this is Bluey. Bluey is a uh, blue tongue skink and they're from Australia originally. And you can see how flash that blue tongue at you. Um, that's a defense mechanism where he would live normally. There's a venomous reptile there that has a blue color. And they, if Bluey gets scared, he would open up his mouth and flash that blue tongue and the other animals might think he's venomous. He's not, he's very, very gentle. And um, matter of fact, he eats a lot of squash and a lot of green beans and a few mealworms and crickets mixed in. So this is Penny the python, and she is a ball python. Like I said, originally these are from Africa. A lot of people try to keep these as pets and don't realize that they, they can live very long time. Penny is about 10 years old, and she can probably live well over 30 in captivity if she's kept well. Penny is fed rats, and you would, not as often as you would think. So we do that about once every two weeks or so. She gets a nice rat, and uh, that'll, that'll keep her going for a long, long time since they don't use a lot of energy. And this is Lilo. Lilo is an eastern box turtle. And again, adopted uh, from someone that had to try to keep her as a pet. Now, although we, we all these animals were rescues and we took these in, um, we, this is not a place to drop off animals. We don't take any more. We have limited space and this is pretty much all we can handle as far as taking care of them. And they're a pretty good representation of a turtle, a snake, and a lizard so folks can see the different types of reptiles um, that are around, that are in the world, right? Um, like I said, Pen, or Lilo is a box turtle, and that means she can close up like a box if she's uh, nervous. Also, she is a woodland turtle. She doesn't live in the pond. So the pattern of her shell will help her blend into the dappled sunlight that's on the forest floor. It makes them very hard to see when they're walking around in the woods. A popular exhibit here is the live observational beehive. What's the big buzz with this hive? So it's a great way to, to be able to see bees if you've never seen them before. It's really cool because they're all behind glass. If you're a little bit afraid of bees, that's okay. You can come right up. They're not going to get out and get in. Um, they do get to go outside, which is kind of cool. Most people don't realize that, and they do come in. So you're looking inside a working hive, and you can spot the queen, which is always fun to do. It's like, where's Waldo kind of thing. Internally, I would call this Bob's baby, but the public knows it as the Bird and Butterfly Sanctuary. Tell us about all the blood, sweat, and tears you've put into this exhibit. Yeah, so we have a great bird uh, feeding exhibit here at the Nature Center and great glass to watch behind. So you can sit inside the Nature Center and just enjoy the birds all through the winter. Um, the feeders are busy all winter long. We have several different types of seed to attract multiple different types of birds. And so it's just a great place to kind of unwind and just sit and enjoy nature.
It's one of my favorite times to visit in the winter because there's just so much diversity. And then come summer, hummingbirds. Hummingbirds, yeah, hummingbirds all summer long. And we do a banding usually in, uh, in August where we actually capture the birds and band them. What are some of the species that you might be able to see here? So um, we have tufted titmouse here, which are not necessarily common everywhere. Also black-capped chickadees, um, red-bellied woodpeckers, and... Um, blue jays, I know, love the peanuts. Lots of blue jays that <laughs> love the peanuts, absolutely, yep. I have so many good memories here at Goodnow Grove Nature Preserve, as do the visitors in the community. We've learned the history from them when they visit time and time again, enjoying this special place. I hope Bob and I have encouraged you to make a visit out here to make memories of your own. If you love raptors, especially bald eagles and owls, mark your calendars when Eagle Watch swoops into Four Rivers Environmental Education Center in Chanahan. This area is a prime spot for bald eagles because these majestic birds flock to open water in the winter to hunt for fish. While other areas freeze over, barge traffic keeps the Des Plaines River flowing. After bouncing back from the brink of extinction, bald eagles represent strength and resilience and command attention when they fly over. There will be several live raptors in the building. You can venture out on your own for some eagle spotting or join us on one of our guided hikes. Hopefully there will be eagles perched in trees or soaring in the sky. Nature is wild and unpredictable, so you never know what we'll see. But we may hit the jackpot. The family-friendly event will feature a number of crafts and activities. There's also an opportunity to grab some grub. No registration is required for this event. For more information, visit reconnectwithnature.org. you'll find one of these on the forest floor. And it's an exciting find, but do you know what it is? This oval fur ball tends to get confused as scat, but it's actually an owl pellet. And I say it's exciting because we just found evidence that an owl lives in this area. Better yet, we can even see what it's eating once we break open this pellet. Owls swallow mice, voles, smaller birds, along with their other prey whole. During the digestion process, the meatier, juicier bits travel down to the intestines for absorption. But they can't break down bones, fur, and feathers, so those get stored in the gizzard. The gizzard will compact these materials until it's full. Once it's full, bleh. This is a barn owl pellet that we've ordered online and it's part of our in-school kit programs when we dissect owl pellets. First thing to know is that it has been heat treated for sanitation. So you don't have to be nervous about digging right in. So right away, I see some orange teeth. That means there's a skull in there. Keep on breaking a little bit. There's lots of little bones. So next we'll have to head inside, grab my tweezers and see if we can clean this up a bit. So this part that I'm peeling away is just the fur. Sometimes you'll find feathers in here. And I'm just trying to be gentle. I personally like using my hands. I feel like I have better control, but you can always use a pair of tweezers to get into some of the tight spots. All right, so right there, I can see this is the lower jaw. This is the upper jaw. This is a rodent skeleton because I can tell with the orange incisors here. And you have to remember, all the juicy parts are gone. So this lower jaw can just come right off because there's no muscles holding it together. You can clean up and kind of see the teeth. Rodents' teeth keep on growing, and so that's why they have to keep on chewing. So sometimes you'll just find this long tooth all by itself, and sometimes I hear students confusing this with a big long claw, but it's actually just the whole tooth that's been separated from the jaw. 
So now that you've found the big skull, there might be some more skulls in there, but you're also gonna spend time to pick out the smaller bones, start learning more anatomy, figuring what they are, and sorting them out. The more you start digging, you'll see there's a lot of like stray bones that are just falling out. And you would think, how am I supposed to ID these bones? A lot of them have little characteristics, like this knob sticking out, that's really gonna help you figure out what it is. All right, so this is a pretty exciting find. I know I get excited very easily, but I had to let out a gasp because I did find a shrew skull. And this is not unusual, but most of the time you find rodents. How I knew it was a shrew is because on its teeth, it's red pigment. And this is actually the iron that's in the enamel. And a lot of times you see the red on the back teeth where they're grinding and chewing a lot. It's much smaller than a rodent skull. I laid out the shrew skull next to a rodent skull so you can see the size comparison. This rodent's bottom jaw is much larger than these two shrew lo lower jaws. You can tell the orange incisor and these teeth made for grinding. Here, the teeth are stained kind of this dark ruby red color for the iron in their enamel. If you look really close, you can see that these teeth are kind of jagged, they're sharper. That's because shrews tend to be more carnivorous, eating insects and to need that teeth to break down their body parts. The last thing you can do is start putting together a skeleton. There's lots of different sheets online. I chose this one of a vole skeleton, which is a type of rodent. And what's fun is really looking at the details of the bones. You may think I have no idea how to identify bones, but the more you look, things have certain shapes. Like the pelvis has a triangle with a hole in it for the joint to fit in. The humerus kind of has this little piece sticking out. So the more you look, the more you notice, and you'll be able to put together a complete skeleton. Owl pellets are a fantastic thing for scientists because we can discover more information about the owl without trying to catch it or hurt it. Owl pellets will show you the full food web right before your eyes. If this is something you would like to try at home, you can order these pellets online. And if you're in a classroom right now, feel free to go to our website and look for our in-school programs to do owl pellet dissections with us. Thank you to our guest, Bob Briarton for sharing everything about Good Now Grove that makes it a must-see destination. And make sure you put it on the top of your to-do list right after a good snowfall to sled on the giant hill, warm up in the nature center, say hi to the critters, and maybe even go on a hike with snowshoes. Map your next adventure at reconnectwithnature.org to find all the latest news on the preserves and upcoming events. I hope to see you exploring this amazing place, but until then, I'll see you next time on The Buzz.